stress it is indeed for persistent systems. That's the next conversation reported a mixed set of numbers in the second quarter due to lower than expected digital growth. However, the company is confident of delivering double digit growth in the second half of FY19. Chairman Anand Deshpande attributed the shortfall in digital revenue to closure of one of the projects and a shift in the business mix as some projects moved offshore. It's a small slice of the conversation that he had with Agam Vakil. So let me first give you a context of where we are. So this quarter, our revenues were $118.2 million. This was lower by 4.3% as compared to the previous quarter, which was $123.6 million. Now, if you look at the reasons why this number dip happened, in the last quarter, we had a resell business with one of our partners where we do reselling of their products. And uh, that has certain seasonality. So there was a dip in uh, that this quarter. So that caused to a hit. And the digital numbers, which should have been going up, actually went down during the quarter. Now, if you look at the specifically the reasons for the digital number, uh, a lot of that has to do with the fact that uh, you know this particular project, which was a couple of million dollars for us, uh, closed abruptly somewhere in the second half of September. And uh, it had to do with facts that there were changes in the uh, thinking in terms of where the product needs to go and what the solutions need to be. and. Uh, our ability to deliver on their uh, change requirements and uh, some of those issues around that. So this kind of closed abruptly and that caused a little bit of a dip on the thing and we had to also undo some revenues that we had from the, which we had accrued in the previous quarter. So there, there are some, this was pretty much a one-off and there was the other one that was more in the services side, which has to do with the fact that some of our business which was being executed on site or in the US context uh, have moved offshore, which in a sense is a welcome move. And uh, from our point of view, it improves profitability and it gives us better management abilities on running businesses when they run from offshore. And we are hoping more of that happens as we look ahead. But uh, in, in, that, in some sense, that's a good sign rather than necessarily a bad sign, even though it affects the revenue mix in some way. So that's how I would uh, read the, specifically the numbers that we see. Now, if you look at the second half of the year, which is going to be the big question mark that we'll have to look at. So clearly, if you look at the outlook and the opportunities that I see in the market, the pipeline looks pretty good. We do see a lot of activity in terms of the nature of the business that we are doing. We are seeing good action in some of the healthcare business and the bets that we have made. And some of the other ones are also panning out. We also have an opportunity in the second half, predominantly with our alliance business, which has a seasonally good quarter in the calendar uh, last calendar last quarter of the calendar year which is our next quarter and we do see a fairly healthy pipeline for resale business so some of those will come up into the second half of the year uh, that said if you try to total it out uh, you know the amount the number needed for making a double digit growth is significantly high so while i don't rule out uh, whether it's possible it is going to be a lot of work to make to make up those numbers and uh, it's a little early to either declare victory or to say that it's not going to happen Right. Dr. Deshpande, in that case, uh, among the deals and the pipeline that is into consideration at this point in time, is it likely that we are likely to see a little more lumpiness in uh, several of your segments, um, say, over the span of the next three to four quarters? And, and I do understand that to a certain extent, uh, well, you know, these abrupt closings is a part and parcel of the business. That said, with com when it comes to visibility, there are some concerns which are coming through a lot of the analyst reports. So my question then really is the expectation of lumpiness in the in the ordeals uh, going forward over the next three to four quarters uh, unfortunately some of this is going to continue in terms of the lumpiness because see what is happening is that uh, we have um, sort of increased our dependence on the ip side of the revenue business and we will see uh, lumpiness on quarters traditionally what we have seen just to give a little bit of color to the lumpiness we see better numbers on IP and uh, resale business in our, um, should I say, odd quarters, which are even quarters for the calendar. So first half ending June 30th and second half ending December 31st is sort of where the calendar years are for many of our customers. And they tend to create lumpiness where we get better quarters in the um, you know, odd quarters for our financial year and even quarters tend to be a little soft. So that's really why why do you see some of this stuff? And as our business mix moves off of pure services to you know digital projects and also reselling and all the other IP related businesses, you will see that variability will con continue. But you know that's part of the business. We want to make that shift. We are trying to move out of being 
completely resource driven to being service driven and uh, we are trying to find some other mechanisms to get some predictability on revenues by trying to look at managed services and various other aspects but that's going to take a few quarters to i would say more than a year to see that the number contributing significantly to stability of revenues on a quarter on quarter basis Right. So, so uh, your press release also mentions that uh, uh, multiple new projects have started in this particular quarter and that will develop, deliver long-term growth. Can you shed some light on the nature of some of these deals and uh, uh, perhaps, uh, you know, if you could tell us, give us, give us more details when it comes to some of these projects? Sure. Uh, you know, so, you know, let me sort of start by a couple of new things that we have announced during the quarter. So, we announced the acquisition of a small company called Herald Health that is very significant from our point of view because that's the tip of the arrow that we are using to sell into the hospital ecosystem where we are starting to see a good, good business potential both with our partnership with Salesforce and other things that we have done. Uh, Herald Health allows us to help with the operational improvements in hospital systems. The second one which we did which is I think a fairly significant one is the setting up of Pivot Lab with Partners Healthcare. Partners Healthcare is a very uh, important uh, healthcare system in the northeast so they have mass general which is massachusetts general hospital brigham and women's and dana farber and it's associated with harvard university and what we have set up with them is to set up an innovation lab that allows it is already an ongoing business for them but we have now part partnered with them to contribute software developers and user experience people so we are able to take uh, you know, the ability to build out next generation solutions in these areas. Uh, the blockchain deal that we announced in the deal wins is another unique one, which uh, it's a fairly significant, but a long term project that we have on trying to look at implementing land records using blockchain. So overall, there are lots of different things going on, uh, which are starting to contribute in terms of the investments that we had made and the returns we are starting to see. But again, you know, it's uh, we are definitely in transition we are trying to make changes to our business and uh, we have changed several things in the last six months and they all uh, take you know i guess some time to make an impact but o overall i wouldn't be i am in a pretty happy state in terms of what i see as we look ahead at the pipeline all right, so uh, so question on your margins, of course, and uh, a highlight for the entire yeah. industry this time around has been the considerable depreciation of the rupee, and I understand over 80% of your revenues yeah. come from North America. So can you tell us a little more about how what role the rupee has played when it comes to margins and its expansion this quarter? Right, so about 100 basis points of our margin improvement would have come from uh, rupee depreciation helping us in terms of the revenues. Uh, in addition to that, uh, there have been, uh, as I said, some business that moved from on-site to offshore, which improves margins. So that has contributed to some margin improvement. And in addition to that, there has been some margin improvement because of operational efficiencies that we have been able to get across the system. Uh, you have to take the margin improvement this quarter and the in the frame of the fact that this quarter we had a salary hike for all the em employees almost 8% uh, on the offshore side and about 3% on the uh, non-India location. So that is sort of absorbed in this thing while we see an improvement in the margin. Uh, there is a dip a bit on the sales and marketing side uh, in terms of what was done, but I do expect that that number will go up in terms of our expenses on sales and marketing will go up in the next two quarters. But hopefully with revenue increase, the margins should not get affected. So we do expect the ability to improve a little bit on the margins over the next two quarters. Uh, so a fun question uh, with respect to uh, so Island FS Group. So there's some reports suggest that yes. there have been certain uh, deposits from persistent systems towards the group. So can right. you give us any clarity on this one? Sure. And uh, we have reported this in the you know printouts that are there on the website for our financial numbers. We have an exposure of about 43 crores. Uh, with ILNFS in terms of investments that we had made with them. Uh, we had uh, certain interest payments that were expected last quarter that came through. The next set of payments are expected in January, February quarter. Uh, so depending on what happens to them, we will decide whether to uh, account for them or how to account for them in terms of the provisions that need to be made. So right now we have uh, in the financial statements which have been audited. We have reported this number, but we have not made any specific provisions for this 
at this time because that was felt that you know there is no real uh, we have not been defaulted as yet. <laughs>